Okay, this is a new Nux application. Is that coming through clearly for you? Mm -hmm. Great. So I've just run um, Nuxy in it, um, and it's created this this folder which has got um, sort of the bare bones. Uh, and actually, most of the stuff here is just uh, infrastructure. The only code we have is app.view. I'll start the dev server, which powers most of what Nux does in the background. Um, so Nux has has got a lot, does a lot of things under the hood for you. Uh, so for example, you'll see that uh, I have this component, which is made available just as a welcome component. I'll open this in uh, the browser. So you can see the, uh, the, um, the welcome component renders this, this thing. Um, and, and you can also see that it has some props, so you can actually change some things about this, and you get uh, type safe access uh, to that. So uh, I think it looks like there's this star GitHub prop, which we could say um, star us, something like that, and that will change some text somewhere in, in here. I'm not quite sure where it is. Uh, but if you were to pass an invalid uh, prop, that would throw you an arrow. So Nux has stuff like that um, built in. Um, and you can you could you could do the the same if you created your own component. We could do something like test me, uh, create a test component. Uh, hi there. And if we go back uh, and use that test component, we could well one uh, your editor knows that it exists, um, and when you put it in, it sort of immediately works. So Next will automatically import that component only where it's used in your app. So it's bundle split out if it, if it needs to be. Um, and then you also get stuff like uh, define props. Uh, and we'll say this one has a prop of message. Um, that is then going to be, oh, and if I say maybe required true, then I'm actually going to need to supply it at this point, or I'll get an error in the message. And we could actually view compiler is expecting a comma. That makes sense. Um, and we should also see that this is typed for us and, uh, and so on. So you get a lot of um, sort of good developer experience stuff out of the box. Uh, the same goes with um, view composables. So a lot about Nuxt, um, we've really leaned into the move from view two to view three, um, which was basically moving from everything being built in, to having a sort of composable logic concept. So you could pull in what you're needing only when you need it. Um, and so, uh, so we do that with not just the, the client side or the Nux built-in utilities, but also your own code. So you could do something like um, uh, use my stuff. Uh, and you, you could create your own composable, do some logic, um, return something. Uh, and then again, you can use that um, easily um, in, your, in your app. So you could just do something like use my stuff. Um, and so that will be typed uh, and available to you. So it knows, for example, what it, how it, what it comes back. Um, so you get this really nice sort of all the way through end to end um, process of what is hopefully quite a clean approach rather than needing to put all the imports. But um, TypeScript and your editor know where they're all located. So when you refactor things, things work. Or when you click through, stuff works. We also have this Nitro server, um, which is mm -hmm. um, which uh, like like Nux uses file-based routing. So you can do stuff like um, we'll call it foo. You could create an API endpoint, um, and again we could return something, some value, um, and you can actually access that uh, with with a this dollar sign fetch utility, which will actually be type hinted for you, so you you can fetch that. So we could actually just display it here. Um, and that's going to be the data that the server endpoint returns. In fact, in the server rendering lifecycle, when you're doing fetches to your own API, um, we don't mm -hmm. even hit the network layer. We'll just make an internal um, request uh, and it will emulate the network layer, which basically makes this possible to be incredibly fast, um, at which is built for serverless because we Again, every time you would hit the network layer with serverless, you would have to potentially invoke a new uh, instance of your, your Lambda. So we, we can just avoid that entirely. Um, and we can even 
Uh, we even supply view composables that do stuff like um, prevent refetching on the client so that there's a, a, a cache. So when this data is fetched, we're able to fetch it only on the server and not refetch it on the client, um, which is pretty useful. And and we can we can mm -hmm. you know pass lots of other there's lots of other um, request handlers and, and other utilities that you can do there. So that's that's pretty pretty nice, I think. Um, Next has always had the concept of uh, of, com of plugins, so code that runs when your server starts. So you could do something like um, you could have an auth plugin, for example, um, and you can um, you can inject uh, like a, a global singleton, um, and you could you could maybe do uh, have your auth user and have a login function or something like that. Uh, and when you do that, you then can access it with uh, use nice app auth, um, and you would then be able to, do, you know, again do the same kind of of stuff, um, where you basically are able to uh, handle things that are in that plugin. We provide um, callbacks, so you could do something like on Nuxt ready. So once everything is all loaded and your app is interactive, then we're going to load a third party uh, script. Uh, we provide sort of obviously Nuxt is uh, server side rendered, so you mm -hmm. can do things like uh, use SEO meta and just put some stuff in, like a title and description, uh, and that will um, that's a pretty easy way of interacting with things. Uh, you can have uh, layouts and uh, root middleware, and you can have. Uh, your own modules that integrate with with Nux. Uh, there's there's lots and lots and lots of stuff. But I, I'm just I'm just talking. What what's interesting to you? What what else should I show you? What 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 does it not do? <laughs> what does it not do? Well, we try we try to uh, to make it. I I mean I would I would um I would use Nux personally in almost any situation. Even even if you don't need a uh, view, um we actually have lots of experimental features. Uh, mm -hmm. We can even turn off, for example, um, what is it? Oh, I think this might now be in features. You can even turn off um, scripts entirely and have a purely HTML rendered app at the other end. Um, mm -hmm. And that that's, uh, that's interesting. How would you describe the, the learning curve of, of Nux? And I mean, it, it looks not scary at all now that you're walking us through it, uh, but for, for, you know, a junior engineer, someone maybe, you know, in college, going out of it, a uh, beginner, uh, how, what are you hearing from people in terms of their first experience with Nuxt? So I'm hearing, I mean, I think I'm hearing, I, I, I'm always happy when I hear both positive and negative stuff. I mostly hear positive stuff. Obviously there's a danger of self-selection there that, um, the things that people tell me <laughs> tend to be more positive. Um, I hear different different things based on whether people use Nux two or not, because I think a lot of the things about View three um, that uh, that are I think good decisions people also might not like uh, if they are coming from View two. So sometimes there's a difference based on that. Um, and if you if your first experience is with Nux three, then you know, things will be more uh, intuitive than if you are coming from a different way of using Nux in in Nux. Um, generally speaking, the feedback is really positive, and I'm really really happy if people give me feedback that isn't. Um, but the very best way, of course, is when people don't just give feedback on is this good or not, but when they become part of a solution, so they have an idea for improving it or thinking through an API that might might uh, be a, a better or, or or even just take responsibility for it. Um, there, there are obviously, there are sometimes, you know, people who come in as sort of uh, with ultimatums. They're like, okay, if you don't change mm -hmm. this, I won't use the project. <laughs> that's not a great way to, to interact because, I mean, the whole thing that's motivating me and most other maintainers is that we want to help people and we want to create a project that people like to use. Um, and it's like you're sort of going like directly for the, the jugular, you know, like, mm -hmm. yes. You know, you thought you thought you did something good. I'm going to tell you it's terrible. Unless you change it, I won't. I won't reject you. Like that's that's a very sort of 
I think if you don't realize that open source is a very personal thing and that, that you know, it's a very, very emotive. Like one of the reasons people burn out in open source is because they pour so much of themselves into it because they, it's, it's very much of them. So when you reject a project, it can come across very much like you're rejecting a person. And it can be really tough. Like, I know maintainers who've had trouble, you know, going to bed at night because what's something someone said, which I know others who are much better able to put barriers in place. But, you know, I don't know. I would, I would just always be very, very careful, even if I don't like a project, not to say something negative about it. Because I'm not just saying something that, oh, I mean, criticism is fair. But, um, but like, think about how you criticize because it, it can really stay with someone because it's not like it's their job. It's not like they finished their work at 5 p.m. They left the project behind. This is the project that they come home to and that they work on in the evenings and on the weekend because they care. I don't know. I just think, think very carefully before you criticize someone's baby. And uh, I think open source projects are. Absolutely. Of course, you know, when it comes to the internet, hope for the best, expect the worst. But I mean, yeah. certainly you're, you're absolutely right here. Thank, thank you for, for highlighting this. And uh, yeah, folks, take it easy. Trying. <laughs> People are trying their best here. Um, but yes, absolutely. Uh, do you think it would make sense for a closer to maybe also show the website or the GitHub repository and for folks to absolutely. get started? Then? Yeah. Um, I will fire up my uh, screen again. Uh, Nuxt website um, is uh, nuxt.com. So you can, you can check it out. Um, there's lot, lots of stuff there. So um, obviously there's the sort of marketing front end that explains a little bit about what it does. Um, you can also go into the docs. The, the, all this content is directly from the framework repository and see how you would get going, um, what the steps would be, and a little bit about the background. Um, there's also more stuff in terms of uh, the next modules list. Um, so this actually has all of the modules that I was talking about, and you can filter and look through those. Just quite, quite a handy guide. Um, you can see a little bit more also about the deployment providers we support. Again, most of these, many of these will be zero config, and it's not an exhaustive list. Um, the whole aim is that we want to support lots and lots of features in a um, cross platform compatible way. So no lock-in. As far as we're concerned, that's a very, very high value. Um, and uh, yeah, there's some more stuff that you can, can have a look at. Uh, so yes, check out nux.com. Uh, we also have, a, obviously, our GitHub repo is uh, github.com uh, forward slash nux. Nux. And that is, uh, that is something that you could check out as well. Um, there are some issues, a few of them. Uh, quite a lot of these are for Nux 2 rather than Nux 3, but we do have plenty of Nux 3 issues as well. If you want to get stuck in, um, you can pick some of those. Um, if you're interested in contributing to Nux, I actually have uh, mm -hmm. a blog article on how you might get started, um, uh, including some links to um, issue searches that you could have a look at in terms of what you might be interested in doing. And I will also say that if you want to, um, I have a, an open calendar invite. You can book any time, 10 minutes with me. Um, if you want to get involved um, in Nux or in open source, I would always be happy to, to chat and help if I can. Um, particularly if, if you feel like, you know, there's something in your background or a past or whatever that might hold you back, I really wouldn't want that to be the case. So um, I'd be really glad to talk to you about it. 